Welcome to Telling the Tale. I'm your host, Mitchell Farley Wolf, and as always, I'm joined by my co host, Dustin Jackson. Hey, Dustin, how are you? I'm doing just fine, Mitchell. I knew you were going to ask me that question. You want to know why? Mm, no, but tell me. Because of the because of the psychic powers. Oh, you have them. Yeah, in this game we just played. Oh, what game is that? <laughs> well, Mitchell, we just played Salmon Max Season Three, Episode One. You want to know what the name of that episode is? Go ahead and tell me. It's called the Penal Zone. It's called. It is called the Penal Zone. It's a funny name. <laughs> It is. It's fun to say, and fun to see people say. So, Sam and Max, The Devil's Playhouse, Episode 1, The Penal Zone, The Devil's Playhouse is the official name for Season 3, by the way, was released on April 2nd, 2010. So, in the canon of games that we've played for the show so far, that is before both Puzzle Agents, uh, and after pretty much everything else we've played. We're going back in time. It was uh, written and directed by Chuck Jordan, longtime Sam and Max episode writer. Uh, what'd you think? I loved it. I, I thought it was great. And the thing about this episode is I still think it's probably... Uh, no, I, I was going to say it's still probably the worst of the season, but it starts out with a huge bang. But I, I feel like there's another episode I like a little less, but we'll see upon replaying it. I think it's a very strong start for this season. Yeah, it's it's really strong, and uh, I, I think we should back up a little bit, talk about this season specifically, uh, before yeah. we talk about this episode. It was only announced one month prior to its release. Isn't That's that wild? crazy. That people can just do that in the year 2010? We can't do that anymore. <laughs> well, they did announce it a month beforehand, but they hinted at it after Tales of Monkey Island. Once you beat sure. uh, T- Tales of Monkey Island, they have like a stinger with uh, a Skull and Crossbones Max head on a pirate flag. So we at least knew it was coming, but still, a, a month out is pretty, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, and, and we pretty much knew it was an open secret that there was going to be a third season of Salmon Max at some point after season two. Uh, yeah. In fact, it probably came later than people expected it to because the first season was mostly in 2007 with a little bit in 2006. Second season was 2008. And then this season was, didn't, it, it wasn't in 2009. They, they skipped a year because they were doing things like Strong Bad and Walls and Grommet and uh, Monkey Island before coming back to their flagship point-and-click adventure series, Sam and Max. And I got to tell you, good game. Like, it's a good one, I think. It's a real good yeah. one. Yeah, I agree. I have it written down in my notes that they really, they just beat you over the head right from the start, letting you know that this is going to be bigger. This this ain't your typical Sam and Max. This is a, it looks different. It feels different. Like the angles of the shots, just everything yeah. about this is Sam and Max on another level. There's actual cinematography in this one, which is... I, right? I, I had that written down, too. Like, certain parts of certain scenes, not just in cutscenes and stuff, but, like, even just walking in the world, you get, like, weird angles. It's crazy. It's great. Yeah, uh, something that felt really significant to me was when you walk in Stinky's Diner for the first time. Stinky's Diner... Is done up uh, compared to season two. I love how it looks here. It looks like every model in the diner is different. Every texture is redone. The whole thing is... uh, It it looks like a solid console generation jump between season two and three. Which doesn't make sense, really, because it it was not. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, But it's... It's cool. It looks great. It it uh, runs well. The story is immediately more interesting, I think, than almost all of season two, if I can uh, be that way about it. Agreed. And I loved season two. And this is yeah. already off to a better start. Yeah. Like looking back at season two, I, I think uh, Chariots of the Dogs, the fourth episode where you go on the mariachi spaceship, seemed like a, a big turning point of... Like, oh, this is how interesting and, like, in-depth with our own storytelling we're going to get. 
Uh, and that did seem like an upgrade from the, the previous episodes in that season. And then this season just starts out wild. Just, <laughs> there's a narrator <laughs> for some reason, and they seem crazy and weird. And they you're talking about uh, Max just immediately getting psychic powers, which is treated as if, like, hey, you're on board for this, right? Max has psychic powers? Okay, moving on. <laughs> yeah, even... <laughs> so this episode starts out with a flashback where Max... Uh, or not a flashback, a flash forward. You're seeing the future. Uh, showing you that Max has these psychic powers. But even when you see him get the powers, it's just a thing. He Sam's talking to the commissioner. He's like, oh, uh, I gotta go. Max is psychic now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... The whole premise of this season, it's called the Devil's Playhouse for a reason. The The pun there is that the, there's an expression, an idle mind is the devil's plaything. This is a whole house of that. So <laughs> uh, a whole house of Max's idle mind m- with Max's psychic powers, you're able to do a lot more stuff that isn't just using items on things uh, in, in the traditional point and click style. You still do that, and that's still how you progress through most of the episode. Um, But you also have these powers that are given to Max through interactions with psychic toys. Uh, The one that you use most often is called the Eyes of Yogg-Sagoth, which is like a viewfinder toy from the 90s, uh, which lets you see a little bit into the future. Uh, Another one that you use pretty often is uh, the Telephone Teleporter, where any phone number you know... You can put it into the uh, teleporter, and then you can just be teleported to that place with the phone. Um, and that's pretty and, cool. Yeah, right from the get-go, both of these first powers you get are great. It's like, these totally mix up what you can do with Sam and Max. Yeah. Uh, the viewfinder really... If you need hints on where to go, you can just get it. You can just see, like... Okay, this is going to be the end results. Uh, most of the time, sometimes you just get funny little uh, vignettes. But, yeah, uh, most of the time it's helpful. It's helpful because like you need that future information to solve a puzzle. But sometimes it just gives you a nudge in the right direction to something that you could find out without the viewfinder. And it becomes a lot less... It's not non-linear. It's still a point-and-click adventure game in the traditional style. But it, it has like a less stringent you need to do exactly this to figure out this other thing to do this other thing right. uh, it, it allows you multiple uh, ways into the puzzle which i really like it's it's yeah. a cool change these new psychic powers really uh do a good job of mixing up what can be done with a typical uh sam and max episode and i love it um what what system are you playing this on Here's the thing. I started playing it on my PS3, and I was thinking, okay, this will be a new experience. I can just play it on the PS3 instead of the laptop, and it'll be great. And then I realized it does not run very well on the PS3. It runs a lot smoother and looks a lot nicer on PC, so I just switched back to that. Yeah, it definitely doesn't look like a PS4 game. It's less graphically intensive than that by a lot. Yeah. But it it seems to be punching higher than Xbox 360 PS3 ish. Um Yeah. It, it's, I, I mean it, I guess it it's, looks it's really nice. For me as a console person, it's really weird when I see stuff in between generations, which PC games can just do all the time because PCs are um on a sliding scale of technology rather than big jumps. Uh but it's always weird when I can't play something like this. Looks wrong. This it's more than a Super Nintendo, but less than a sixty four. <laughs> uh, and th- this is one of those games. A little bit, not not that strongly, but uh, it does seem yeah. better than PS three. I, I I wonder how uh, the remaster is going to look. Like obviously, technology these ga- d- these days will be easier to uh, it'll be easier to handle it. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, they either have to do a lot to this game or maybe just keep it very similar. I can't tell what they're going to do because with season two, just like season one, I can te- I pretty much know what the remaster is going to look like. Yeah. Um, not like exactly, but I know that it's mostly about lighting and uh, camera angles and new textures 
and the outline effect that they put on the characters. That stuff is is mostly going to be it. But for this season, every episode in this season has a different, almost like an Instagram filter on the whole thing. Yeah, it's very gritty. It ha- it uh, has almost a gritty texture over it that makes it feel more uh, detective-y. Well, this episode does. This episode definitely feels detective noir, like 1940s noir movie. I guess mm-hmm. not, not 1940s because it's more sepia than black and white. But uh, maybe I that guess, tone. I guess one thing I didn't really like about how this episode at least looks... I feel like we're missing some of the colors of Sam and Max. Like we don't get the orange sky. Uh, hmm. it, yeah. It's very, it's very grounded in its colors in this episode, except for maybe in the spaceship where you have uh, purples and blues. But otherwise, like the buildings and stuff are kind of typical grays, browns. Uh, and it's not that it looks bad, but it's just something I was kind of missing. Overall, it looks a lot better. But yeah, uh, in the past, Sam and Max is been a very cartoony um almost pop art style um and now that they've got i guess the assumption of a little bit more processing power on players computers uh they're trying different stuff and this episode was very film grain um inspired if if because it's not actual film obviously because it's a it's a game you can't do that um but it it looks it looks like maybe maybe a nineteen seventies exploitation movie is the better comparison. Yeah, uh, than it's a 40s it's Norman. very ambitious compared to the past couple seasons. Yeah, I definitely see what you 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 mean with the lack of color, but I actually I don't know I liked it. Uh, I, I thought yeah, it was no a cool overall for it. overall I like how it looks. It, it's kind of like a like three or four steps forward, one step back. So overall, it's still a. Uh, it's still very good. Yeah, and especially keeping in mind that in the future of the season, every episode has a different one. Yeah. So, uh it's it it that was it for the like sepia film grain. We're going to see different stuff now in the next episode and the next episode and the next episode. Uh but all of them look very different from each other, which is nice and it's impressive <laughs> that they're able to <laughs> pull that off like five different times in the sp- uh span of like the development of one game Th- this one is i think the first time i've really been impressed with telltale on a technological level uh, i agree in, in it's the first one where i'm podcast. like wow this looks nice yeah uh it, it's the first one where it's i mean there's a lot of things in all of the games that we've played so far that i wouldn't know immediately how to do um but with this one specifically, it's like, oh man, I I really don't know even where I would get get started trying to do this effect. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of weird stuff here. Um, okay, the episode itself, Dustin, this intro is amazing. <laughs> I love it. I, it it's so good. It's it starts you out in this uh, crazy scenario. It, it starts very high energy. It just immediately smacks you over the head with all these new things with the psychic powers. Uh, you have a new control scheme, kind of, too. You don't move by clicking anymore. You actually use... Uh... Well, you can, you can like, drag with the mouse still, but you can also use the WASD keys. Well, yeah. I was wondering what you thought of that, because actually, I don't like that. I don't either. I got used to it, but... I feel like it's just easier to point and be like, Sam, go here. Yeah. yeah, like the fact that you can't point on the ground and just tell the character where to go is annoying. Um, I I would have at least liked the option. Like you could do either one. Yeah, I, I was uh, playing most of the game with my left hand on the WASD keys and my right hand on the mouse, which is just less convenient than only using the mouse for something yeah. like this um but it's it's fine i it's it's worse i think but it's not like a deal maker or deal breaker. yeah it's 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 fine i i i didn't like i wasn't miserable doing it uh dustin were you miserable doing it no i don't think so okay <laughs> good um <laughs> But that's actually not where it starts. It doesn't start with the the space scene. It's or the spaceship scene. It starts a little bit before that with a narration. 
uh, from the narrator, who's That's going right. to become a running theme throughout these games, uh, throughout the season. Um, I remember what his whole deal is, but I won't say anything yet for people that are playing with us. But in general, as of what we've seen so far, uh, what do you think of this narrator? Because I, I love this guy. This guy's great. I do too. Uh, his voice acting's very good. I like, uh, he has a very striking character design. He looks very unlike usual Sam and Max characters. Uh, the This is going to, I'm going to uh, poke into our linguistic gymnastics just a little bit so I can say something that the narrator says. Um, this is the very first line in the whole episode, which is the first line in the whole season as well. It's the narrator, and he's like, it, it's showing you a, a pan over of the cosmos, just some some like dreamy imagery. And uh, he says, in all the universe, the only power beyond the comprehension of the mind is the power to comprehend the power of the mind. Oh, ho, ho. What a what a ridiculously nothing statement. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first, that's how you're opening your video game. In all the universe, the only power beyond the comprehension of the mind is the power to comprehend the power of the mind. <laughs> Holy shit, that's nothing. <laughs> I love I love how absolutely nothing that statement is. It, like they're just presenting it to you with the confidence of a billion sons trying to make you like, think yep, oh, we're this is standing something. by this <laughs> <laughs> we, we are absolutely going to present this as if it's a thing <laughs> and if you don't think it's a thing guess what you're wrong i <laughs> i i paused the game immediately once i i gained control of the characters and I just, I, I wrote that line down and I just looked at it for a, like a couple minutes trying to f- figure out, is there anything here that's real? Or <laughs> like, did you just try to say some shit that is <laughs> among the tone of the game? Uh, Maybe it's not for us to understand. Well, that's the thing about understanding. The only power beyond the comprehension of the mind is the power to comprehend the power of the mind. Ah, there you go. See? What what do you think that means? <laughs> uh I think it means that uh it's it's a ludicrous undertaking to even begin to comprehend this sentence or no the mind. Oh yeah, all right. Um I I wrote down that uh Sam and Max has had some cold opens before. I'm reminded of the one in Germany with the with Jurgen. Mm-hmm. Um, this is probably the coldest opening yet, where we're just <laughs> on a spaceship. Suddenly, Max has psychic powers. There's Skunk Ape. He's dating Stinky somehow. Um, Are we and- at the North Pole? Because this is the coldest dang open I ever done seen. <laughs> Even the North Pole one seemed warmer than this, and that was that was a different <laughs> one. Um. So here's the deal. Here's here's the the actual plot of the episode. We should do that probably. Yeah. Um General Skunkape or Skunk Ape uh comes to Earth in a spaceship and at first he's trying to play it all cool like he's just a peaceful guy trying to exchange some technology. Um and and that's it, but really he's looking for this uh psychic toy uh which max found earlier it's the viewfinder that lets him see the future he's looking for this and also a side thing he's doing is every planet he goes to he harvests all the mole men (laughs) uh which i guess is just a thing on every planet he goes to they always have mole men yeah just your average mole men (laughs) um because their sweat um does stuff it's very slippery they've said uh what else does it, it do is it it just fuels power? his ship yeah it's just fuel for his ship oh, okay. is uh mole men sweat because uh they said uh I, th- I think it was the brain that we meet uh s- spoilers for later in the episode people watching we haven't quite gotten there yet but he says uh he says that he's wiped out uh half he could wipe out half the population of a planet's mole men 
just to travel between uh, systems. Well, what's interesting is that later we see that Harry Moleman, uh, who was who was put into the Moleman Harvester, uh, got out. So, and then he says, like, it's it's Moleman sweat. They're they're doing mole juice. <laughs> That's what they're all about. <laughs> uh, so maybe maybe they don't always die because Harry got out. Uh, yeah, but it definitely is presented like they mostly die. Those poor mole men. And that's not even like Skunkape's main thing. That's just a <laughs> side thing that he does. That's just a part of him. Yeah, that's just a, a Harry S. Pumpkins part of it situation. Um, <laughs> the the main thing he wants to do is just use that uh, viewfinder of the future to take over the universe, to see his enemies, plan, uh, plans coming up against him, try to avoid attacks, basically become invincible. Um, but Max wants it more, so he doesn't give it to him. <laughs> and uh, you, you spend the whole of this episode basically trying to outfox Skunkape, and he gets a, a couple of clever things in there. Uh, and it ends with you delivering Skunkape into a another dimension you've created, which is reminiscent of the Penal Zone which is uh, where he's from. It's like an interdimensional prison that he broke out of. And you made another one, and you put him in there. And it's that's, like, that's uh, the what, do, what do they call it in Superman? Like the Phantom Zone? The it's Phantom, yeah. That. Yeah, it, it's... it's uh, Except with a funnier name, so I like it more. There was an episode, I don't, I don't think you're watching this, but Marvel's What If uh, is, is coming out as we're recording this. And... One of the episodes that came out had a uh, had a very similar concept to this, um, based on Doctor Strange just like fucking up his whole life really really badly, and uh, and, and doing this he ended up in in a sort of penal zone. Uh, th- by the way, if you think they don't make jokes about the phrase penal zone, <laughs> you'd be wrong. They make boy. Do they really revel in it? Boy, boy, do they know exactly what Penal Zone sounds like. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, there, there's a, a lot of stuff on the way. There, there's some stuff. Uh, uh, um, the main characters of this one that are, like, sort of incidentally involved are Stinky, uh, both flavors of Stinky, uh, and Mama Bosco as, as well. Isn't Mama? it? It it's so crazy that we don't have our usual suspects for the most part. There's no Sybil. There's no Bosco. Instead, we have some returning characters and some new ones. I I like this. I like that they're mixing it up. I love Sybil and Bosco, but we've had two seasons of Sybil and Bosco, so now other characters get some time to shine. Yeah, they they referenced where they're where they are. Uh, Bosco took Bluster Blaster. And went to Las Vegas. What a combo. I wish we got right? an episode showing that. I want to see the adventures of Bosco and Bluster Blaster together. Yeah, I guess Bosco's um, paranoia of people watching him all the time is over. But it's replaced with just hatred of his mom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he has to get out of there. Um, he's not mentally all right, but the way he's bad is different than before. Yeah, he he he's in a uh, he. It's a lateral move. Now help me out with Sybil because the episode sort of starts with Sam and Max moving boxes of her stuff out of the place that Sybil's used to be. Sybil's office used to be. Yeah, um, because she's on her honeymoon with Abe. But, is that uh, what they said? Okay. Yeah, she's. They said she's on an extended honeymoon. Um, that reminds me, the end of season two of Sam and Max ends with, uh, the DeZoto possessed by a, a demon, uh, <laughs> driving Abe and Sybil out of, uh, of their wedding to their honeymoon. And then like the stinger on that is Sam saying, can we trust them or can we trust the car with them? Because the, the car is, is possessed by a demon. Are they going to be fine? 
Yeah, probably. I guess we we have the DeSoto back now at the beginning of this season, so I guess that stinger was sort of nothing. Yeah, you just have the car back. <laughs> it, it's kind of, they mention it once. They mention, like, uh, Sam asked the cops, uh, he's like, "Isn't wasn't the DeSoto uh, possessed by demons? And they're like, eh, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, the cops are in this, too. Cops are in the, De- they're just in the DeSoto from now yeah. on. So they they were, I guess they were homeless after Pimp Car went down. So they, they don't have a, the business to fall back on anymore. And I feel for them. They, they fired Bluster Blaster, it sounds like. He did something bad in the workplace <laughs> and they had to like get him out of there. I, I love the idea that Bluster, they don't tell you what it was that got him kicked out. But wasn't he still like zonked out? before this uh i think that yeah i think they ended season two with him zonked out I he's think. like i'm fine Sam. so what happened <laughs> yeah he has the voice of homestar <laughs> when the, he has to wake up and he sees that <laughs> yeah. strong bad's broken Thanks his cow waking my cow lamp. <laughs> people listening take a shot every time we bring up the cow lamp <laughs> hey guys thanks for breaking my cow lamp <laughs> um uh, I, I miss him like i love the cops but it doesn't feel right not having bluster blaster but i also like that i i like that sam and max isn't a series that stays the same like there's changes yeah like you you, you don't even go in your office building in this episode no you don't uh well technically you do a little bit but you don't go in the part of your building with your office in it you go yeah. under it in uh a, a tomb looking thing with a weird mole man uh cult that's been there the whole time <laughs> who would have guessed i had a hunch yeah <laughs> um oh man that cow lamp this <laughs> i love it's that joke so you. much yeah. <laughs> i can't even i can't even think about sam and max anymore um okay uh <laughs> moving moving on uh what else what else is there um there's so, the oh yeah go ahead oh i was just gonna say so you find the brain in uh skunk ape shit that kind of gets you going on your first uh thing to do uh yeah the brain that's in the uh in the future vision uh it's not as alive as it was so you have to bring it back to life somehow Right, you do that by using Grandpa Stinky's devil's broth, which is just something that he has. <laughs> yeah, it it it. <coughs> sorry, Ooh, uh, it doesn't it doesn't right? matter. It doesn't even matter what it is. It's just a. All you need is a liquid, like the yeah. fact that it's a it's a demon. Uh, it's demon broth doesn't play into it at all. Yeah, it probably could have been Gatorade because it just needs to conduct electricity right it just yeah they could have gone to the store to get like water (laughs) yeah water and a little salt would probably connect it just as much (laughs) yeah but hey they got the job done yeah they they got it uh they had to do it the the old sneaky way like they they always do in these salmon max (laughs) games that's our salmon max um let's see here the, I, have uh, written, I have it written down. Uh, Harry Moleman and his many nipples. Yeah, Harry M- Moleman's got a lot of nipples on display in this episode. That's good. I'm I'm glad for that. Yeah, you see him twice. Yeah. Um, Dustin, in the last season of Sam and Max, or even the first season, I think we were trying yes. to figure out where they are because it, it it is framed like it's a New York ish place, but we we never really found out. Do they ever say New York? They never do until this season. It, it's firmly New York now. Now we know that. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad. I can sleep at night now. Yeah. Uh, Grandpa Stinky talks about the radio station he's uh, listening to as being the best one in the greater New York area. Uh, the worst news stand outside of Stinky's uh, mentions the uh just the state of new jersey being nearby and then you see the map in the desoto it has queens and it has brooklyn technically it's called the brooklyn wastes um, <laughs> it, it's i love that map it's a weird 
you know, low fantasy version of New York, but it's it's yeah. New York uh, for sure. I yeah, love the little drawing good. of Sam and Max in the car. Yeah, there's a lot of things actually that are from Hit the Road in this season. Uh, the drawing of Sam and Max in the car is totally evocative of Hit the Road. Yeah, um, it, it's like old Sam and Max. Yeah, and and then also the way that you interact with items. Uh, you look at them in your like you, you have a view into the cardboard box you keep your stuff in mm-hmm. and you have the ability to like use examine or grab a thing uh, yeah the grab the... is exactly from hit the road isn't it with the squeaky toy yeah it's it's the exact same uh the the exact same I like icons that. it's great yeah um it, it's probably like a little less elegant than the previous seasons in in terms of usability, but uh, it looks more fun at least. Yeah, I I think it's worth it at the end of the day. <laughs> um. By the way, I found. Did you see the Scoggins billboard? Yes, I was. I had it written down in my notes in all caps. Scoggins yes. Erasers billboard. I'm glad that we played uh, Puzzle Agent first. Yeah, it wouldn't have that wouldn't have had nearly the same effect. Uh there there's also some Grickle based uh drawings in Mama Bosco's uh place. Like uh, uh oh, I think really? it's a Graham Annabelle. I'm pretty sure that's Graham Annabelle. Uh, the one with Sam and Max, but they look like all weirdly uh like hairy and droopy. I can kind of see that now, like the the uh sketchy uh pencil work on them. Yeah, I'm actually I'm I take that back. I take my sureness back. I'm not sure, but I think I still think it is Graham Annabelle. Um I might have to fact check that. Yeah, so I t- Puzzle Agent came out after season 3. Or was uh, it during, during season 3? Okay. Yeah, so Puzzle Agent 1 came out uh in I think we said it was June of 2010 and this is April. So only a couple of months after this. Okay, so it was it was it was already in the works, basically. Oh yeah, um, the Scoggins Eraser thing was a big multimedia marketing stunt. That's right, with the iPod Touch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I noticed they don't do anything like that for Sam and Max. Hmm. Yeah, where's my iPod Touch? I cover Sam and Max. <laughs> Yeah, we talk about Sam and Max here, Telltale. Give us some iPod Touches. Give us a couple iPod Touches. What's what do you have to you can lose? Do? More money than you've already lost? Yeah, sure. Well, new <laughs> Telltale, you seem to have some money. You can give us iPod Touches. That's allowed. <laughs> That's fine. We'll be we'll be waiting by the mailboxes. Yeah, um, just, just stick them in the mail. <laughs> stick them in any mailbox. It's probably mine. <laughs> It's it's likely that you'll hit the right mailbox sooner or later. Just get a bunch of iPod touches. Um, let's talk about what Mama Boss goes up to because she okay. she has a very different place in this episode than uh, in previous episodes. She got a whole laboratory. So yeah, she's still a ghost. Um, <laughs> and while we've seen what Sun Bosco has been able to do in terms of constructing a lab. It's always been really scrouty row, really ramshackled. And um Mama Bosco's lab is incredibly sophisticated. Uh, yeah, it's ev- actually helpful. Even without a corporeal body, she's been able to put together quite a bit of stuff. That uh, seems hard to do. Yeah, maybe impossible. I actually don't know how that works. <laughs> I would I wouldn't even be able to put a lab like that together alive. I don't think I'd be able to do a Lego set dead. <laughs> <laughs> um but she's developing some uh some technology that lets her phase f- through one reality to the next in the multiverse uh and you're able to co-opt this technology to uh put Skunkape in the penal zone that's how you use it uh but i think what she, it, it's not exactly stated but i think what she's trying to do is uh oh excuse me 
I there's a fly right in front of me. Oh no. I wish it would go to the penal zone. <laughs> uh what she's trying to do is to get to the spirit dimension to phase her her ghost into a body. It's like hinted at here. That's why right. she's working with that uh that technology. I think that's fair. I think it's fair to want a physical body. Um yeah, and she has a very interesting relationship here with Harry Moleman. <laughs> so Yeah, he he just uh, you go ahead. You go ahead. No, you you do it. Oh, okay. I was just going to say so you enter Mama Bosco's laboratory and uh you see our good friend Harry Moleman. Uh he's acting as like a uh assistant uh but Mama Bosco says she never hired him. He's just doing this. Yeah. Uh like she, he's trying to translate for the dead as if he's a medium. But everyone can see and hear her. She's being very upfront <laughs> about her presence. Uh, so he is not needed in any kind of way. <laughs> and then you go trick him into almost killing himself. <laughs> uh, Poor Harry. It's always something with this guy. Well, I am i don't like that guy, so I'm fine with it. <laughs> you're, you're fine putting Harry through uh, through various tortures? Yeah, I think there's this thing that happens with Sam and Max characters that's very different from the Homestar characters, uh, which is, like, the Homestar characters, I like all of them. They're all really good. Um, they, they've they got their characters in that universe down to a science uh-huh. where, uh, like, Coach Z isn't likable, but he he's really good in the way that he portrays his <laughs> unlikability. Whereas some Sam and Max characters, I'm like, yeah, no, I don't feel bad killing this guy <laughs> get out of here harry i'm fine shooting a soda popper straight in the face like at this point <laughs> in my life i i would not be worried about it at all uh well luckily you won't have to <laughs> anymore yeah they they seem very dead <laughs> <laughs> um let's briefly not briefly let's take our time okay. uh I was going to suggest, Dustin, unless you've got any other ideas, that we just hop into our segments now and then we can pick up some other information about the episode later on. Oh, kind of mixing things up? Yeah, I'm thinking about mixing things up. Maybe, uh, kind of like how this season ahead mixes of time. things up. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. you got uh, me. All right. I'm, I'm down with that. Okay. Well, our first segment, as was the case before the Puzzle Agent games, Linguistic Gymnastics, Dustin. Hit me with some lines. I got a few here. <coughs> Sorry. I, I still have a lingering cough. Let me take a swig of this water and then I'll lay some lines on you. I hate to make you be talking so much while you have a cough. No, it's fine. It's it's a lot better than it was. So I got I to gotta scare the cough out of me. <laughs> Is that how you do it? Yeah. <laughs> so maybe at some point later, just... Uh, Send, just message me on Discord. Just say, like, boo or something, and we'll see if that works. Mm, okay. I'll put a, sc- a scary picture of, like, a like a big dog in it. <laughs> like a scary big dog. And I'll go, ay! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, linguistic gymnastics. I have a few. I feel like not as many as some other episodes, but it's still a pretty good amount. Uh, I like in the, uh, in the intro... Uh, in the f- uh, future vision, uh, when Max turns into a plant, one thing I like about this intro is you get these, you get some of the toys in this intro, but you don't get them later when it actually happens. I, I was really worried that, uh, well, well, we'll get to that part, but uh, anyway, so you have to turn into a plant. And uh, Sam says, try to look leafy and inconspicuous, Max. And I, 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 I like that. Yeah, it didn't that's make good. Me... <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, I'll have to call you back, Commissioner. Max has psychic powers now, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, when you find out that uh, Bosco Tech Labs has moved, uh, Sam says, uh, this is kind of a bad location to be a ghost. All the best cemeteries are on the other side of town. Th- that's uh, that's a good true thing about uh 
cemetery. If you are a ghost, do you think you want to be in a cemetery or do you want to stay far away from that kind of place? Um, <coughs> uh, I guess it depends on the ghost. Maybe some feel more at home. That's true. It you can uh, ghosts are basically tenants of bodies. If if you think about it that way, yeah, they're just paying rent on the inside. <laughs> um, one is a line that, like, the line itself isn't really funny, but the concept made me laugh. It's when you're listening to the radio and it says, uh, "You're listening to WSNT, all sea shanties, all the time." Yeah. That that was a that was a prediction of the future with uh with how popular sea shanties have become. Yeah, I love sea shanties. I'd listen to that radio station. That's part of why I love the new Stinky's Diner. I love the music. Yeah, at the time in 2010, that was a purely dumb thing. But now yeah. in 2021, a lot of the a lot of the world is pretty down with sea shanties. I'm very down. Uh. Okay, the next one, Sam says, Sorry, Max is all short-term memory. I have to bring him back up to speed every once in a while. And Max goes, Ah, giant talking dog! Classic, classic joke, classic joke. <laughs> uh, <coughs> uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, uh, I have a line here, but I'm trying to remember what the context was. Uh, I, I think Sam says it, but I forget is there someone who died? Because the, the line it the line is uh, he died too soon. I'm assuming. Oh, the brain, the brain, the brain. It's the brain. He says he died too soon. I'm assuming. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, I'll 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 pick just one more, or maybe two, because I'm not even like halfway down my list. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So. Uh, the next one is when you're talking to the cops and they're telling you about the uh, the clue scanning thing. And Kurt says, submit clues gathered for for your investigations and we will analyze the living hell out of them. That's a really good Kurt. Thanks. You've said that before on this show. About every voice you do. Yeah, you're very Thanks. good at voices. <laughs> Um, uh, okay, okay, I'll do one last one. One okay. last one. Okay. It's it's when you're looking into the future, uh, and I guess at this point, uh, Skunkape is already taken over, because uh, Max says to Sam, uh, "General Skunkape the Second has demanded tribute," and Sam says, "You used to be so much cooler, Max." <laughs> 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 All right, I'll I'll let you go. What are your linguistic gymnastics? Well, as as discussed earlier, the best line of the whole thing is the very first line of the episode which is in all the universe the only power beyond the comprehension of the mind is the power to comprehend the power of the mind said in like <laughs> the most straight voice like yeah you believe the shit the power to you, you know they sold it <laughs> i believe whatever it was they were saying um <laughs> okay harry Mullman at the end of the uh episode is yelling, General Skunk Ape is illegally harvesting mole juice! In, in a pretty good way. Uh, oh, there's a reference to the Queen song from the Flash Gordon uh, show. Uh, because the brain's name is Gordon. So mm -hmm. uh, Skunk Ape comes in and he yells, Gordon's alive! Just like in the song, which I thought was a fun thing. Just like uh, in the song. It's just like, I, I remember. I, I, I remember. I, I like it. Sam and Max are outside of their uh, office building, and it's all closed off for repairs. Uh, and Sam is talking about how he really wishes he could get in there because he needs a shower. And then Max suggests, we could give each other tongue baths like cats and flight attendants <laughs> do. And then Sam says, <laughs> well, okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mitch, Mitch, Mitch. After you're done, I have one more that I need to say. I totally forgot because... I, it, it's my favorite line in the episode. It was one I remembered from a long time ago. Go ahead, you go ahead the, and do it. No, no, you say the rest first. You say the rest. You okay, say the rest well, of yours first. Uh, so when you see Girl Stinky for the first time in the episode, she goes, "Oh, hi, Barney and Jug Jug." Uh, just <laughs> completely giving up on trying to think of their names. Although when she's on the phone later in the episode and she doesn't know Sam and Max can hear her, she calls them Sam and Max. 
So like this is a purposeful gaslighting that she doesn't she's, know. She's doing their this names. on purpose. <laughs> yeah, she's calling them Barney and Jug Jug to just to make them feel bad. Yeah, Max says you're not even trying. Uh, this this next one isn't really that funny, but I I liked the way the voice actor hit it when Sam asks General Skunkape as um, does the general want a banana? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like the way Banyanya sounds. Banyanya. Banyanya. Uh, I might start saying it like that from now on. Why not? Actually, probably, probably not. No, you should do it. Uh, what's I'll, your I'll probably though? go, uh, I'll probably go, can I get some Banyanyas, please? And they'll be like, what? <laughs> and I'll say, oh, uh, bananas, I mean. You're, no, you'll be like, mm, five Banyanya, please. <laughs> and they'll... I'll take five of your best Banyanyas. <laughs> uh, they'll have to give it to you at that point. They want you gone. They want you out of there. (laughs) Get out of here. Take these bananas. Bananas. Banana. (laughs) Mm, Banana. Uh, Mm. What is is your line, Dustin? So I cracked up when I heard this line because I remembered thinking it was so funny as when I first played through this. It's when you're looking at uh, the machinery in Mama Bosco's lab, one of the machines... Sam doesn't know what any of these do, but one of them, he says, uh, this thing does science so hard, you say, I've never seen that much science. And then it's all, check this out. And then, boom, more science. Yeah, that's good. That was a good <laughs> one. Uh, Sam has a lot of good interactions with the machines in there. I also like when he called uh, Skunkape a total dillweed. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> dillweed. <laughs> I haven't heard that one in a while. Maybe we should bring Yeah, it kind of went back. out of style, but it, it really hits when you use it. If someone calls me a dillweed, I'll be very upset. And I don't even know if that means I'm like <laughs> stupid or mean or I think it just pathetic. means a general ass. Like it's like you're lame, you dillweed, and it's like, oh, what? <laughs> what? You're not a dillweed? I thought I was cool. Don't call me that. Um That's linguistic gymnastics. How about your potent pickup? Potent pickup. So I was going to cheat and say the toys, but I felt like that was too obvious. I'm going to say Stinky's cell phone because it, I feel like it lends itself to some uh, pretty good puzzles in this episode. It does. There's a lot of good puzzle stuff with the the phone. Um, I, I don't think it's cheating to say the toys if you specify which toy it is. I'll keep that in mind for future episodes. Well, in this case, I am, I am going to say the Eyes of Sagoth or, or uh, Yog sagoth the viewfinder. Okay. I really like that. Well, I like seeing the future. See, the it's thing fun. is, I, I would have, but I felt like I would be doing you a disservice by saying such an obvious thing. But if you're saying it, then that opens that opens the floodgates. Well. I could say you, all the toys I want after this. You can say one per episode. That's the cool. problem with potent pickups. <laughs> There's more than one. Um, What is your golden moment? Do you have one? Yes, I do. Uh originally i put the opening where you do where you're on the ship the uh, future vision but then i remembered a one that i really liked it's a single gag it's when uh so there's one of skunkape's guards blocking the uh, toy store and you use the uh, the eyes to see into the future and you see sam like you see them looking down into the uh, sewer and they're like, ah, the oldest joke in the book. And and then you find a banana peel in the dumpster. So it's kind of setting up, oh, okay, he's going to slip on the banana peel and fall in the sewer. But uh, no, that is not what happens. He comes over and he's like, uh, you, should, you should be ashamed of littering. And, and he picks up the banana peel and then Max comes over and, and, uh, and slams his head between two garbage can lids like symbols. Then he falls into the sewer. I, I liked that bait and switch. I was like, ah, I thought yeah. they were going to do the thing, but they did a different thing. That That is the oldest trick in the book. Um, garbage can <laughs> they, lids. Yeah, they sure fooled me. Um, uh, what's yours? I think that first, uh, that first monologue of the narrator is just so bewildering. I want to pick that. But uh, <laughs> I, I had another very small moment uh, later on when you're trying to convince Stinky to date skun- uh, Skunkape it, it, like the, the thing that convinces her is that you telling her 
if she was dating him, she'd probably sit slightly further away from you. And she was like, <laughs> huh. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and she does it. <laughs> I, I like that you. she'd rather get closer to Skunkape than stay close to you. To answer even one more of your questions. Yeah, you are worse than this giant space ape that's attacking the city in this moment. A spape. A spape? Wow. <laughs> Look yeah. at you. Andros is a spape. <laughs> You're going to go to Wikipedia, a uh, list of spapes <laughs> in fiction. There's a lot of spapes. Uh, maybe Klingons are sort of a spape. I don't know. Um, but... Dustin, who's your weekly guy? You know what? My weekly guy this week, I I just got to go with Max. He he brings so much to this episode with his new psychic powers. It's it's great. Like being able to do anything with Max is already a step up, but to do something with Max in such a creative, fun way, I I think it's great. I I think that's the highlight, not just of this episode, but it's what I think of first with this whole season. Um, so I'm I'm giving it to Max this week. I I like that. I think that's good. I think I think I'm just gonna give it to Skunkape. I almost did because he's very good. Yeah, he's solid. He's a solid new intro character. I, I like that we get a new villain to Sam and Max. That's that great. Yeah. Before we started recording the show, uh, just now. We were having a conversation of who's the most iconic video game villains, and obviously Bowser is number one. And then, like, numbers two through four are some order of Sephiroth, Ganondorf, and Dr. Eggman, probably. Then Skunkape. And then Skunkape, right at number five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's good. He's a, he's a good villain. He's, he's really... Uh, you you really yeah, like he has to a solid des- yeah he has a solid design his voice his uh, vocal performance is great he's very memorable his whole butt's out <laughs> yeah that's true also he shows up later in uh telltale uh uh poker night at the inventory yeah he does doesn't he i, I forgot just as that. just as a cameo not mm-hmm. like playable but he's still there uh, you you can tell they really really liked Skunkape as like a, a pet character for the developers, considering that the new Telltale studio named themselves after him. Yeah, exactly. The he made a very strong impression. Isn't he even in the logo like a silhouette of him? Yeah, that's crazy. This character, like of all the characters, that's it's like I like him, but it's very funny to think about how he had a whole influence on this new studio. Yeah, it, it, it's such a weird choice for it, too. Uh, also, he's not like an ape and a skunk. That's not what his design is. His des- The design is just a, a an ape. Like a yeah. weird, different kind of one. And, like, <laughs> skunk is just his name. <laughs> it it doesn't skunk go together. Ape- isn't skunk ape like another nickname for a type of Bigfoot or something? Is it? I I know I've heard it for something else other than this. Because I remember seeing the word and I was like, oh, like from Sam and Max. Oh, you're totally right. Oh, I, I just found it I just found an image of a skunk ape. I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to you. Okay. Uh, yeah, just check check this out. Sorry, this is bad podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. He, he's described as the Florida Bigfoot. Yeah. Gross. The swamp ape and Florida Bigfoot. Yeah, I'm glad that the one in Sam and Max does not look like that. So it's skunk as in skunk weeds or skunk water rather than a skunk. Yeah. Uh, because it, it's from swamps. Gotcha. Understood. <laughs> I didn't know that. I did not know that about the phrase skunk ape your whole world has been opened up yeah it's really changed uh do you have an I, unweekly I guess, guy uh you know what i struggled to think of this one i feel like everyone really brings it this episode i put down harry mole man for being such a weenie yeah i did too <laughs> yeah like like it i like that he's a weenie he brings that element and he does it well to this series but if you gotta pick one it's gotta be harry 
Yeah, I I think that recently we've been using Unweekly Guy to talk about how much we have fun disliking something versus actually disliking it. Yeah, um, if if there's if there's a character that sucks, then it's a lot easier. Like Abe Lincoln. Yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll let you know. Um, but they just do a good job of making characters more likable. I guess as things go on. Yeah, we'll see. Well, likable in in, in quotes. <laughs> we still got here's, about here's eight years of Telltale after this game to cover. That's true, and I I know for sure there will be actual unweekly guys once we get to like Walking Dead and stuff. Yeah, there's going to be zombies in that. It, like, at least I don't like that guy, that zombie. Yeah, yeah, zombies would be pretty good on weekly guys. I don't know if I'd want to talk to them. Yeah, they've they've like made conscious decisions every time that they could try to bite you to bite you. I'm not into that. Yeah, that's not cool. I wouldn't do that to them. But yeah, Harry Harry Moleman just sucks. <laughs> Harry Harry Moleman, like uh, when you give him the vacation card, which is actually a card to uh enter the mole man processing unit in skunk ape's ship uh harry really wants it because he thinks it's a vacation uh you are about to offer it to him in exchange for a lottery ticket that he does not think he'll win and he's like trying to sucker you in it still and he's already (laughs) got like the upper hand and then max is basically like no dude i don't come on (laughs) and harry's like oh yeah 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 sure okay okay sorry (laughs) i gotta say you really fuck him over yeah you really do you take a bunch of money he deserves it almost kill him (laughs) yeah he deserves it he sucks but it i'm still kind of like boy he could have been on easy street if you didn't come along yeah, I, I think about, like, the time that you've spent with Harry Mulman, because it starts in episode three of season one. Uh, in in Save the World, he's the mob boss just because he is, I guess. Like, it didn't even make sense for him really to be that at the time. It was a play on the fact that he's a mole. Yeah. And then now, look where he's come. He's uh, a... <laughs> now he's, he's being harvested for his juices. He's really developed. <laughs> I will say I do like his model of him when he's uh, working for uh, Mama Bosco with the uh, the outfit and the hair. Yeah, it's good. He cleans up pretty well, that Harry Mullman. Bad Harry Mullman him. <laughs> uh, so that's our segments. At the very end of the episode, you lock Skunkape in the new penal zone. And then you are treated with a little stinger where you find out that there has been skeletons of Sam and Max in your building, under your building the whole time. Uh, So what is that? Is it freaky time travel? Is it ancestors? Like, what is it? I don't remember, actually. I I played this game a long time ago. I remember exactly, but I won't say. Oh, okay, great. I'm, I'm glad you do, but I'm also glad that I don't. (laughs) uh and with that i don't think i have anything else to say about this episode right now do you i don't really either the thing about this episode is in the grand scheme of this season it does feel like a first episode just kind of setting things up uh, getting things off the ground episode but overall in terms of sam and max i put it pretty up there yeah it's really good it's it's just solid it doesn't like wear out it's welcome too much either it ends when it feels like it should end uh where i i felt that some of the season two episodes were getting a little long Mm -hmm. Um, here's a question for you okay which episode do you think is a stronger start this or ice station santa because i know i know we praised ice station santa pretty heavily um i mean i think this is a better episode than ice station santa okay um in terms of being a start I think Ice Station Santa is still one of the best episodes in season two, uh, where this one, it just keeps getting better from here, if I remember correctly. Uh, so I don't I don't really know. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to say. I, I feel like I got to give it to this one. I feel like Ice Station Santa is cool, but it does feel kind of standalone with its theme. This one feels like it's really the start of an ongoing story. It, I remember when, when Ice Station Santa came out, I I wasn't playing the game yet, but uh, from the way people were talking about it, that episode was out a little bit longer 
uh, before the other episodes in that season came out. So it, it kind of felt standalone. They they needed the extra time to do Moai Better Blues. Yeah, they really needed to put all of that uh, <laughs> puzzle design in there. Re- really paid off. Yeah, they had there there weren't enough babies at first. So they added, <laughs> they added more babies. Once they added baby Jimmy Hoffa, it all came together. <laughs> yeah, they got Jimmy Hoffa, and then they realized that they had made something really <laughs> special, and it was finally now we got an episode. Out. <laughs> i i don't want to rag too hard on on well no you know what i can rag on moai better blues because look at how much better they got it, it's yeah. okay to have the bad one yeah it's it's a lot worse than like every other episode in the entire series of seasons yeah but it it's okay because they really uh, came back strong even just right after that episode we got uh night of the raving dead which i i like a lot and now we're at season three that's just better and better as it goes yeah um i guess just my last thought is how much of a improvement in the writing and gameplay and visuals and everything this seems off of season two like yeah just all of it i think it's so much better it's um and and i liked season one and two a lot that's why we did the podcast yeah um I, well, it, it's part of why we did the podcast. Um, but this is just, it's clearly another league. This is a really good game. This is it's uh, a It's strong from game. the get-go, it's a big step up for Sam and Max. Would you recommend someone start with the Devil's Playhouse ever? Would you ever recommend uh, that? I'm going to say... In this I'm gonna episode, say... there's not a lot that directly points back to other stuff. There's some stuff, though, but I, I'm going to say no, because I feel like you'll appreciate the improvements a lot more if you play seasons one and two. Yeah, I just also know that it's 11 episodes to get here. Yeah. So, it, you know, it, if you don't like season one, I don't think that's a sign that you won't like this one, because this is better. So yeah, and it's different. It brings in like new stuff. Yeah. So it's not a case of if you didn't like this, then it's not going to win you over later. It totally could. Yeah, I, I never felt like the first two seasons of Sam and Max were really pushing what the design of a point and click adventure game could do. It never felt mm-hmm. experimental in that kind of way. It all it only felt like yeah, these are bite sized LucasArts adventure games. This is just what that is, and uh, and this this is the first time for Sam and Max where I feel like, okay, we're really, we're experimenting with the genre. Strong Bad experimented with the genre, but not to like do new gameplay things or, or interesting design choices or anything like that. It did it to better adapt the source material. This experimented with the genre for design reasons and it, it paid off, I think. Yeah. I'd say this is the first time in Telltale's history that they really kind of get outside that box. Like you said, Strong Bad kind of, kind of does a little bit, but like Monkey Island, as much as I love Monkey Island, that's probably my favorite one in the series just because I really like the source material the best. But I, this is the first one that feels like they're like, okay, we got to start doing some new different stuff and they really succeed at it. Yeah, I, I totally agree um so and i can't i can't wait to get to the next one as much as i like this one i think i actually think episode two is my favorite in the whole season well speaking of episode two dustin what's your twitter (laughs) glad you asked uh my twitter is amazing dj dustin and that's also my instagram and I also have an art Twitter called Dustin Doodles. Go there if you want to see some, uh, just some little pictures. But They're Mitch, good where pictures. can these, where can these fine people find you? You can find me on Twitter at the Wolf FM. That's at T H E W O L F E F M. And until next time, we'll see you around. We're going to cover next up is episode two of Sam and Max: The Devil's Playhouse, uh, the Tomb of Sam and Mac. So thank you for listening and see you later. See you in the funny papers. <laughs> I don't know what that's. Well, yeah, what to is mean. that? Is that that's a next... <laughs> I think that's an insult. I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, I see hope you next you didn't time. Plan that. <laughs> see, see you next time is what I meant to say. <laughs>